Hey everyone, Tragic MTG here again. Finally, to open up some Throne of Eldraine. Just a regular booster box right now. Um, my collector's booster packs are coming tomorrow at long last. So I finally got a regular box. Let's open it up. Let's take a look. Does anyone care? Because they're not actually collector's packs. They're just regular old magic cards. What's that all about? Does anyone even care anymore? Doesn't have shiny alternate art and storybook frames. We still gotta check it out. See what it's all about, right? I do like the theme of the set, the fairy tale setting. Um, I think they, for the most part, straddle the line between two fairy tale ish and you know, still maintaining the magic feel to it. So, uh, looks like this is going to be kind of an all around success. So, let's take a look at these. We're just going to, hey, seven dwarves, right? We're going to kind of look through a little bit, talk about adventures. I'm going on an adventure, right? Run away together. Some people were saying that's the hunchback, um, which it makes sense. I kind of think this is a callback to Frankenstein, actually. Uh, where the monster and the young girl um, meet and he's probably going to murder her. You know, that's just how it goes, right? So Hansel and Gretel when they're young, got some ghosts, got the Kenriths doing their thing, the wicked stepmother. I like a lot of the elements here um, just from aspects of, of fairy tales and they've put their own spin on it. We've got a spinning wheel, speaking of spinning, a wander mare, a thunderous snapper, and a Clackbridge troll. So here's your cheap, costed, black creature that's way too big that has a minor drawback. You give your opponent some goats. We can deal with the goats. And then the food tokens, right? Here's my food token. Got a, a new playmat for this go around as well. So let's see here. Let's get a little organized. If that's even possible for me, as you well know. Next pack. Go through this. I see a shiny red cap riders. This mystic sanctuary, the Merfolk Secret Keeper. Very cool. I think uh, I'd like to try playing some mill with a card like that. Sir Care of the Bold, Trail of Crumbs, Righteousness, a Wild Born Preserver. This is another solid card that I think is going to see some play. Uh, Flash and Reach, Elf Archer. Whenever another non-human creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay X. When you do, put X 1-1 counters on Wildborn Preserver. Uh, solid early game and late game play, I think, right there. And a Foil Beloved Princess. Uh, this is another one that I think is uh, a little bit underrated for what it is. So another good early game play that has some, some use, usefulness to it. Look at that food token. It just looks unhappy. Literally is a grumpy food token. All right, next up here, Get the Rimrock Knight and an Outflank. Tree Folk Reaper of Night. I won't say all of them, I guess. Tournament Grounds, Improbable Alliance, Oakham Adversary, and Ember Cleave, a mythic legendary artifact that you can kind of sneak on to uh, an attacking creature. Um, so that's pretty cool. And a foil Rimrock Knight. And a giant. I kind of thought giants were going to become, you know, more of a tribe with this set. I mean, there definitely are some giants in here, but no one's really talking about giant tribal right now. Foreboding fruit. We've got a covetous urge, a keeper of fables, a slaying fire, and an iron crag pyromancer. Uh, let's let's read it for a change here. Two and a red, a human wizard. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, iron crag pyromancer deals three damage to any target. I mean, it's good. You want to be drawing more cards, right? And you want to be dealing damage to targets. So 
That one's good. And a foil beanstalk giant. Just a standard uh, frame there. Uh, I'm not positive on how to get a hold of all of the uh, different versions of adventures like that. I know there's like a big long chart that you can look at. Um, refer to the chart if you're interested. Tome Raider. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. A Flaxen Intruder. Um, regular art. Inquisitive Puppet, a Fairy Vandal, and Fires of Invention. This one is uh, pretty interesting. Three and a red enchantment. You can cast spells only during your turn, and you can cast no more than two spells each turn. You may cast spells with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of lands you control without paying their mana cost. So, a lot of fun things you can do with that, I think. More food. The the food token mechanic courses, not quite as good as treasure tokens, um, but they I think they put enough stuff to do with it in here. Um, yeah, creating food tokens and using them to recur things out of graveyards. Um, so I think it's it's going to see plenty of play. Giant opportunity, some beans there. Okay, Ranger, Cauldron Familiar is already tearing it up in standard, I believe. And Stormfist Crusader, black and a red human knight menace. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player draws a card and loses one life. That is interesting. So it's a it's a bob for everybody, huh? All right. Scavengers, Rosethorn Acolyte. Foulmire Knight, Venerable Knight, Burning Yard Trainer, who is a knight, and a Hushbringer, which is, uh, this is a pretty powerful card. For two, you get a Flying Lifelink Fairy. Creatures entering the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities to trigger. It's a one-two. People are divided on the art. I like it. The little, <laughs> the little lips there are a little odd, but I got no problem with it. It's like a... It's like a Rolling Stones cover or something going on over there. And a foil steel gaze griffin. Alright. Moving right along. Some knights, some equipment, some walls. Golden eggs. Claim the firstborn. That's just rude. Baby stealing. Shine chaser. I like this card. Um, probably not the greatest card ever but I like it Archon of Absolution and Linden the Steadfast Queen three white legendary creature human noble vigilance whenever a white creature you control attacks you gain one life you're kind of stuck in white then using that but it's I think solid Lock Dragon in foil look at those bananas that's that is they're bananas those bananas all right, weasel back, red cap, another red cap, a spore cap, red cap raiders, a lot of red caps going on here, and a, uh, oh, that's good, Merrileaf Pixie, a flying mana dork, Lucky Clover, Savvy Hunter, makes some uh, food tokens, I think, there, Castle Ardenvale, is a land enters the battlefield tab unless you control the planes you can tap it to add uh, white and you can pay two and two white to create a one one human creature token a white one right so all your for all your white deck needs nice token i love tokens the provisions fell the pheasant i do like uh some of the names that came up with for this set. Clockwork Servant. Revenge of Ravens. All that glitters. It's a good I like this card too. And Fave Wishes. Here's a solid one. One and a blue. It's got adventure. You may choose a non-creature card you own from outside the game. Reveal it and put it into your hand. That's cost three and a blue. 
Then you can cast it again for one in blue and you get a 1-4 flyer that you can discard some cards and return it to your hand. I think that's got some possibilities right there. All right, we're going to pick up the pace here. We're going to kind of skip by a lot of the commons. Bake into a pie, though. We got to look. I mean, it's just an extra cost murder, and you get a food token out of it, right? Epic Downfall, Resolute Rider, a Mad Ratter, and Fabled Passage. So this is a good land right here. Just a fetch for a basic land. And uh, let's see. Oh, if you control four or more lands, untap that land. So it's... I think it's good for good for standard. I don't know if it'll see play in any of the older formats. Sorcerer's Broom in foil there. Cool. And a Garrick token. Garrick's back. What do you guys think about that? I like Garrick. Fling. There's a Sorcerer's Broom. Hypnotic Sprite. So there's an alternate art. Um, adventure looks good I like it Sir Conrad the Grim tearing it up as well and a murderous writer this is a solid card uh, let's see swift end it's a murder destroy target creature or planeswalker I'm sorry that's more than a murder and you lose two life um, but very useful and then for one and two black you get a lifelink uh, two three creature that when it dies it goes on the bottom of its owner's library We've seen it. We know it. It works. It's a good card. A wishful merfolk. Merfolk and dwarves and pies. It's fun stuff. Wintermore commander. Turn into a pumpkin. Mysterious pathlighter and a wicked wolf. Uh, two and two green when Wicked Wolf enters the battlefield. It fights up to one target creature you don't control. You can sacrifice the food. Put a one counter on Wicked Wolf. It gains indestructible until end of turn. Tap it. So, can you declare it as a blocker first? I would imagine so. That's kind of what that's for. Uh, let's see here. Next pack. The Witches. And Drown in the Lock. I want to play with this card. Um, some Mill, like Counter and dis Creature Destruction. I think that's a good card. Into the Story, Sir Conrad the Grim and Avantress Gargoyle. Card that would go very well with Drown in the Lock. Um, I'll probably be playing around with this one as well. For only a one and a blue, you get a flying 5-4 gargoyle, but it can't attack unless defending player has seven or more cards in their graveyard, and it can't block unless you have four or more cards in your hand. I think those things are doable. Uh, it can also tap to each player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. I'll be building around that as well. Four token. Okay. Squire, I'm going to skip through, Marleaf Pixie, Trail of Crumbs, Righteousness, and a Castle Lockthwain, so it's the black version from this land cycle, uh, enters the battlefield tab, unless you control a swamp, you can draw a card, then you lose life equal to the number of cards in your hand, so I don't know, is that one going to see any play? It's a little expensive of a cost there, but you definitely want cards. The Smitten Swordmaster. Resolute Rider. Sir Alan the Lion's Claw. Mad Ratter and Castle Vantress. A blue version of this one. And it can scry. Queen of Ice. The Ice Queen. Trebuchet. Mystical Dispute. Shambling Suit. Heraldic Banner. Giant Killer. So far I think I've only gotten one Mythic. Just saying. Uh, you can chop down to destroy target creature with power 4 or greater. Or and then you can cast Giant Killer who's a 1-2 that you can pay to tap creatures with. So that's okay. Alright. Alright. 
Barge right in. Tempting witch. Good art on that. Wander Mare, Witch's Oven, seeing a lot of play right now. Thunderous Snapper and a Sundering Stroke for six and a red. Sundering Stroke deals seven damage divided as you choose among one, two, or three targets if at least seven red mana was meant to cast a spell instead. Sundering Stroke deals seven damage to each of those permanents and or players. There's your big mono red. Red damage spell for the set. There you go. Kind of like a, kind of like a pushed bane fire if you kind of look at it that way. Except it can, it can still be countered. Tome Raider, out muscle, glass casket, lock dragon, frogify, and a questing beast. So this is a pretty awesome card. Two and two green. It's got vigilance, death touch, and haste. It can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. It's a four four. Combat damage that would be dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented. And whenever it deals combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker that player controls. This is a solid, solid beater. Uh, and it's cheaply cast costed. So that is seeing play right now, I'm sure. Got a lonesome unicorn. Oh. Witching well. Got the Elite Headhunter. Grum Gully the Generous, another card I like. Bognati and a Yorvo. Lord of Garenbrig. He's cost three green. And he's zero zero. Hmm. Enters the battlefield with four one one counters on it. Okay. Whenever another green creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a one one counter on Yorvo. Then if that creature's power is greater than Yorvo's power, put another one one counter on Yorvo. Hmm, I don't know if I would want to try to outmatch Yorvo. You get a couple green creatures out and he's already pretty big. You could dump out a bunch of sapperlings and get this guy really big if you wanted. So there's that. Opt is back. It's almost like it never left. Deathless Knight, once in future, turn into a pumpkin and a stone coil serpent. This is a proliferate target if I've ever seen one. You can play it at any phase of the game. Turn one, turn ten. Reach, trample, protection from multicolored. Snake coil serpent enters the battle filled with X one counters on it. Just make it however big you want. I think it's a cool card. I will be messing around with that one too. Malevolent Noble. He's not levelent, he's malevolent. Skull Knocker Ogre, Order of Midnight, Frogify, Sorceress Spyglass is back in standard. For two, an artifact as Sorceress Spyglass enters the battlefield, look at an opponent's hand, then choose any card name. Activated abilities of sources with the chosen name can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. Yeah. Shut down whatever is going on in their hand, right? Turtle, I like him. Return to nature. The ritual. Okay, into the story. Arcanist Owl. Cool. You're in Craig Feet. I must have missed an uncommon. I don't think it was an important one. Ooh, I got a full rare. So, Aaron Crag Feet is one and three red, and you can add seven red mana to your mana pool by casting this. You can only cast one more spell this turn, so make it count. And then a foil stolen by the Fey. Return target creature with converted mana cost X to its owner's hand. You create X11 blue fairy creature tokens with flying. Not bad. All right, I can see that. I'm going to put it there. And yes, I know my piles are out of control as usual. And I'm throwing stuff around. And this video is a year long. All right, skipping through the commons. Inquisitive Puppet, Steel Claw Lance, Sir Alin, and Mirror Maid. Copy some artifacts or enchantments, right? Cool. Whoops. Token, token. Still got a bunch to go through here. Um. 
found two mythics so far. Flax and the Intruder, Fairy Vandal, Cauldron's Gift, and a Murderous Rider with the alternate art. Very cool looking. Um, not sure how much more this will be than the regular version, but I gotta figure it's gotta be a little bit more. Awesome. That's that's a good pick right there. Skip all of the commons, Overwhelmed Apprentice, Spinning Wheel, Beanstalk Giant, Folio of Fancies, one in a blue. Players have no maximum hand size. You can do some stuff to make a player draw. Each player draw X cards. Each opponent puts a number of cards equal to the number of cards in their hand from the top of their graveyard in, or their library into their graveyard. You know what I'm saying, right? I said all this stuff. And another foil rare, Happily Ever After, two in a white. It does a bunch of stuff. Uh, enters the battlefield. Each player gains five life and draws a card. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are five colors among permanents you control, and if there's six more, wait, six or more card types among permanents you control, and or cards in your graveyard, and your life total is greater than or equal to your starting life total, you win the game. Easy. That's it's easy, right? Just do all that stuff, and you win the game. Still, it's cool to have it in a foil. All right, here we go. Skip, skip, skip. Sorcerer's Broom, Red Cap Melee, Kenrith's Transformation, and Dance of the Mance. Return up to X target artifact or non-aura enchantment cards, each with converted mana cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If X is six or more of those permanents are four, four creatures in addition to their other types. I like it. I'm going to try it. Rally for the Throne, Animating Fairy, Sir Farron the Hinge Hammer, and Rankle, Master of Pranks. This is a fun card. 2-2 two and two Black, 3-3 three, three Flying Haste. Whenever Rankle, Master of Pranks, deals combat damage to a player, choose any number. Each player discards a card. Each player loses one life and draws a card. Each player sacrifices a creature. Another, another solid one right there. And I got a foil island and a regular island. Okay, then. I know. I'm taking forever. I know Rudy can do like two boxes in 15 minutes. I'm considerably slower than Rudy. I don't have near the charisma that he does. If you like him, go watch him. <laughs> Emberith, Shieldbreaker, Alternate Art, very cool. Frosty of the Wilds, Inspiring Veteran, and Castle Garenbrig, the green version of these lands. I think we know what it's all about. Smashing stuff over here. We got to skip through some of this stuff. Tournament Grounds, I got quite a pile of comments here. Improbable Alliance, Okame Adversary, and Oko, Thief of Crowns. There it is. Uh, he's a legendary planeswalker. He makes a food token. He can then turn other stuff into an elk creature. And then he can exchange control of artifacts and creatures you control with other stuff that other people control. We know about Oko, I think, at this point. There he is. And moving right along. Spectre Shriek, Drown in the Lock, Slaying Fire, Wish Claw Talisman. This one's kind of cool. And I got a foil merchant. Um, Witch Claw Talisman enters the battlefield with three wish counters on it. You can pay one and tap it to remove a wish counter and search your library for a card, put it in your hand. But then you got to give it to your opponent to, <laughs> for the next time he uses it. So that's pretty interesting. I think it's still, I think it still could see some use. I like the adventures. I just decided. I was on the fence. Fireborn Knight, Keeper of Fables, Heraldic Banner, and Midnight Clock. Two and a blue, add blue. And to tap it, okay. Then you pay two and a blue and put an hour counter on it at the beginning of each upkeep. Put an hour counter. When the twelfth hour counter is put on Midnight Clock, shuffle your hand and graveyard into your library, then draw seven cards and exile Midnight Clock. Mm, okay. 
maybe there's a way to work that that I don't obviously know right now. Skip all these, drown in the lock, clockwork servant, into the story, which is vengeance, one and two black. Creatures of the creature type of your choice get minus three, minus three until end of turn. Yeah, you get rid of those pesky knights that way, so that's solid. Just a few packs left here, and I will let you go again. Thanks for watching, honestly. Lonesome unicorn, that's, that's me sometimes. Spectre's Shriek, Sage of the Falls, Arcanist Owl, and an Oathsworn Knight. This guy comes into play with four 1 1 counters. He attacks each combat if able, like a Juggernaut, right? If damage would be dealt to Oathsworn Knight while it has a 1 1 counter on it, prevent that damage and remove a 1 1 counter from it again. I think it's solid. Skip. Got a Steel Claw Lance, Epic Downfall, Cauldron's Gift, and Love Struck Beast. Beauty and the Beast. Got two and a green. Well, uh, hold on. Heart's Desire, you can make a 1 1 human creature token. Then for two and a green, you get a 5 5 Beast Noble. Can't attack unless you control a 1 1 creature. I think it's doable, right? And you got a Foil Barrow Witches. There it is. One pack left. And we'll scan them up and see how we did. Slippers and Cottages and Falmire Knight. Rampart Smasher, Mysterious Pathlighter, and Piper of the Swarm. They hit like every fable here, right? Pied Piper even. One in a black, a human warlock, which is a new type, I think. The rats you control have menace. You can make rat creature tokens and you can sacrifice rats to gain control of the target creature. So that seems doable. And there you have it. So, all right, be right back and we'll count these up. All right, now we're into probably the better stuff. Murderous Rider, 1048. Murderous Rider with even cooler art, 13. Got a Fabled Passage, 10 bucks on the nose. Oops, of course, of course. Ember Cleave, Mythic there, 399. A Questing Beast, 1796. Rankle is 892. And then Oko, Thief of Crowns, I think is going to put me over my box total. It's actually not that version. It's not a promo. It's just the regular old Oko. Out of the regular old set, still pretty good, 35 bucks almost. Total of 132.99, mainly on these last few cards here, and uh, so my box turned out pretty good. So, anyway, if you liked watching this, give me a like and check out my other videos, and catch you next time.